Okay, so I have not been on here in a while. Why have I come back? Why is Mike back? I'm back because, as you know, the American elections is literally next week whenever, whenever you watch this. And I want to talk about this thing I've been seeing on Twitter, which is um, pastors, spiritual leaders, um, saying things like, if you're a Christian, you have to vote for Trump. You can't be a Christian and vote for Kamala Harris. And, and of course, I'm a Brit, right? I'm not voting for anybody, that's the truth. <laughs> but it really did get me so annoyed and animated that I thought I had to kind of make something. As you know, this channel is meant to be about logical thinking, right? And, and this is just the most illogical thing and I just had to say something. I mean, number one, the Bible's quite clear about what it means to be a believer, right? It's very, very clear. Uh, trust in Jesus, belief in Jesus, repentance, believer, done. Now the Bible gives you clues because it also says, well, if, you, if you're genuine, then you'll have fruit, right? So we can look at people who have the fruit of the spirit to, to show that they, they have the spirit and they're a believer. That's pretty much it. How you jump from that into the voting choice you make confirms the faith you have in God is wild to me. And one of the biggest issues we've seen with the American elections is the sort of um, rank and high of topics like abortion. And for a lot of people in the Christian right, abortion is seemingly the, mo the only thing that matters in life, right? How you treat your neighbor, whether you love people, um, you know, whether you believe in the death penalty. These are all things that people are like, doesn't matter. <laughs> all that matters is abortion. And this is a problem, of course, because when it comes to picking a political party to, to, to vote for, I mean, number one, your vote is literally just a tick in the box, right? As a believer, you want to be a lot more sort of wide-eyed about this because your vote is sort of the entry point it's the first thing you do but then you get involved and you try and tilt society in a way that's according uh, to your views and the difficulty is with political parties they have a range of different perspectives what's called a platform the republican party sure they might have a strong you know sort of anti-abortion platform but what about how they treat kind of black people when the police stops them what's their policy on that what about how much wealth or access to wealth building black americans have what about their response to that what about their rhetoric around immigration and how they treat people who are not from this country but uh, who are not from america but seeking to make Amer america their home what's their policy uh, around that there's a range of issues. I mean, I mean, what about the, the, the Republican nominee, Donald Trump? What about his personal behavior? What about his personal rhetoric? What about the, the, the models that he, 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 um, he, he um, sort of uh, displays for people to follow? You have to consider all these other things as well. The idea that you just go, well, he's, he's, in, he's in the right place for an abortion, and for that reason we vote for him, is wild. And even though the Democratic Party might be somewhere on abortion that Christians aren't, aren't at, you have to ask yourself, again, those, those same questions. Where are they on how they treat their neighbor? Where are they on, on how they try to uplift the lowest in society? Where are they on how they look after orphans? And I mean, there's a wide range of things wrong with the world. And a political party is a, a party or group of people putting out their store to say we want to try and solve this issue. To think or to say that to be a Christian means to vote for one of those parties over the other is a gross overstatement. And my big problem with it is it cheapens and it sullies like the, 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 the Christian office, like the, the role of a pastor. Because now you've got your pastor a minute after saying that, shaking hands with Donald Trump, taking selfies, and you kind of go, mate, really? What about maintaining a prophetic distance so you can maintain a prophetic witness? What happened to that? What about not allowing yourself to be sullied by the duplicitousness and all the stuff we know politics is? What about all of that as a pastor? And so I can rant on this forever, but I just, I just think if you're American and you happen to be watching this before the election, that is, please don't buy into this nonsense that to be a Christian is to vote this way. Absolutely not. You can exercise wisdom on these matters. You can walk and chew gum. You can weigh up all these varying perspectives and you make a vote. And again, your vote is just one decision. You can still get involved in the political process after voting and continue engaging and having discourse and having different uh, perspectives. Don't let anybody take your Christianity, wrap it up in the American flag and say, well, to, you know, to be a real Christian, to be a Christian nationalist. That, that believes in very, a very myopic and narrow view of what America ought to be. That's just nonsense. And now they're stepping into weaponizing the Bible to basically further their political aims. Do not let that happen. We'll see who you vote for. We're done.